Hi, everyone, and welcome in. I'm with the new head coach of the Boston Celtics, Ime Udoka. Ime, congratulations. Welcome to Boston. This is your first ever head coaching position. What made you feel that it was the best fit for you here with the Celtics? Well, the conversations I had with Brad initially, you know, they went very well. I, I felt like we were in alignment on the way we talked about basketball. And then when I met with the ownership group, Wick and um, Steve, it was just more symmetry there. And so, you know, you always look at the, the, the relationships within the organization, but then obviously the roster. And then for a first time head coach, let alone any head coach, they would jump at this opportunity to work with our guys. And so it was an ideal fit for me, a team that has high expectations. You know, that's where I've come from, played in the playoffs all nine years of my coaching career. So look to continue that. You were assistant coach with the San Antonio Spurs, the Philadelphia 76ers, and most recently the Brooklyn Nets. How do you think that that'll help prepare you for this new role? I think all the different experiences uh, will help, you know, enhance me and shape me into who I am as a coach. Uh, obviously, the foundation that I learned in San Antonio, you know, working under Coach Pop for those years is, is going to carry me through my career. And I'll always have those. But the two years outside of San Antonio were almost as invaluable. And so working with different players, different philosophies and kind of being in the East Coast market and seeing how it is, you know, Philadelphia and Brooklyn, it, it's all been beneficial. And like I said, as much as I learned in those seven years, those two years were just as crucial for me. You mentioned that foundation in San Antonio. I know, I know Pop's been really a mentor for you, and he said that you have a great ability to be able to relate to players. What would you say maybe was the greatest lesson that you took during your time from Pop? The relationship piece, it's, it's pretty much that simple. I mean, there's X's and O's, there's disciplinary, and there's accountability and all those things, but it's really relationship-based. And, you know, I watched it, obviously, playing with, Tim, Tony, Manu, those guys as a player, and then moving over to be a coach, I saw the relationship Pop had with those guys. And that's, you know, 15 or so years built up. And so I had to take that into my own relationships with newer guys, whether it be LaMarcus or Kawhi or Ben and Joel in, in, in Philadelphia. And you got to have your own genuine touch to that. But I learned it's really all about the relationships. You know, once you get their trust and show them that you love them, they'll, they'll, they'll run through a wall for you. And likewise, you want to do the same for your players. For those that aren't familiar with you or, or that don't know you very well, how would you describe your overall coaching philosophy and, and just your coaching style? Yeah, first thing would be a, a hard-nosed physicality. You know, you, you, wanna, you want teams to kind of emulate who you were to some extent as a player, and that's who I was. But if they don't have that, you want to help rub that off onto the players to some extent. And, and, you know, you take a team like Utah. It doesn't matter who the personnel was. You knew what they were going to be with Jerry Sloan. And so... Some of that is, is what I look for, but also, you know, unselfish basketball, selfless players. And, and, you know, I was around one of the biggest with Tim, you know, one of the greatest power forwards of all time is probably the most selfless individual I've known, especially for a superstar Hall of Famer. And so you try to encourage guys to be that. And, you know, obviously Jason, Jalen and some of the young guys we have are, are foundational pieces. And so just help them grow, push them to be great and achieve their potential. And, and they're all asking for that. And I'll be happy to obviously you know, be the next guy to push them in that direction. As you do help them grow, just for you being a former player, how do you see that just benefiting you and your ability to connect with the players and um, really have them listen to you? Yeah, I think there's there's only benefit to that. Not saying that uh, someone that didn't play can't be a great coach, but, you know, I've been in their shoes and, and you know, my journey was a little different. Role player, you know, maybe as eighth to 10th man, but I've been in their shoes and gone through some of the things, some of the same things they have. And so you can relate on that level. But at the same time, I understand they are superstars at a certain level. And so there are things I haven't been through as well. But just the day to day NBA life and, and some of the things we can talk about, it's not just about basketball. You have to check on them off the court and make sure everything's going on with their family as well. And I've formed those relationships with those guys over the last few years. And I think that'll be great for us going forward. Just hit the ground running. I don't have to really spend time building those. They're already there. And it's just more so establishing what's next with us. Right. With those relationships, I mean, you worked with them during the FIBA World Cup, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, Marcus Smart. What was that experience like for you and, and kind of the bond that you've already created now heading into this season? Yeah. It was great. And like I, I said, we bonded and in, in from day one, it was something coincidental that, you know, it just happened to be these three Celtic guys. And, you know, I was good with all the players, but I really liked something about each of those guys. And, and, you know, Jalen's temperament from day one, I, you know, I told him the other day, he was one of my favorite players three, four years ago, and I could see the potential and growth where he was at. 
you know, me, who I was as a player, is very similar to some of the things Marcus brings. And so I love his edge, his chip that he plays with. And I, I see how invaluable that is for a franchise. And then Jason, you know, just seeing his growth, you know, we kind of plugged him in to be, before he got injured last year, we plugged him in to probably be one of the top three guys with, with Donovan Mitchell and some others. And, you know, unfortunately he got injured, but we saw it in practice from day one, you know, his growth and potential. And so it's not surprising to see what he's done over the last few uh, post seasons against us. And so funny story, he thanked me for the Philly series. You know, he <laughs> said, thanks. You helped me get paid and, <laughs> and blah, blah, blah. But like I said, I've seen it firsthand with yeah. Philadelphia and Brooklyn. And even though we won in Brooklyn this year, you know, he had 50 in, in one of those games mm -hmm. and obviously it was a handful. So potential is crazy and he wants to be pushed and I'll be happy to do so. Yeah. How do you balance that, though, uh, you know, coming in, pushing the guys and motivating them, but also being a, a coach that the players want to come to and kind of balancing that? Yeah, it's, it's you know, some of the conversations we had from day one is we need this. We need to go in this direction. And we feel you, you've done that authentically already with us. So continue to be who you are. And then um, the balance is, you know, I, I go back to off the court, you know, trust, respect and, and building these relationships with these guys. And so. You know, the perception of what a head coach has to be, I, I kind of try to debunk some of those things. I'm going to be who I am. I was very hands on as an assistant and that'll not change as a head coach. So they'll probably see certain things where like, damn, I've never seen this from a head yeah. coach, but yeah. it is who I am. It's who I've been with them and obviously delegate responsibility to your staff. But me forming those relationships is built off something that I'll continue to grow. Finally, before we let you go, another one of those relationships, Al Horford, I know you worked with him in Philly and he even said during his presser, you guys have a great relationship. What do you think that, you know, now being back with the Celtics, a veteran big, a versatile big in Horford can do for this Celtics team and really impact this group? Yeah, well, the leadership piece is what stands out from day one. You know, he was a vocal voice in Philadelphia and just getting there, you know, as I did. So you can see the leadership piece there, the veteran experience and playoff series he's gone through in, in um, Atlanta and, and Boston. But also, the versatility brings he's, he brings a different dynamic than, say, a Robert Williams or, or even Tristan or whoever it may be, you know, a big that can shoot the ball and pass the ball, initiate some offense. So there's a lot of great things he does, not just the leadership. It's on the court as well. And uh, although we had an up and down year in Philly, we all did that year. You saw him last year with Oklahoma City kind of get back to who he was. And, you know, I know him well enough and work with him specifically in the bubble where I can push him to that and help him be who he is. And. We've talked about it already, and look, we're both looking forward to being back together. Well, Ime, congratulations. Thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it, and welcome to this great city, this great organization. We're really excited to have you and get started. Thank you. Looking forward to it.